Welcome back everybody. Just Mike here. Anyway, I'm going to kind of show you a hazard sometimes when you order from GW on what they do for packaging. This is a skinny little box. Or it's not actually little. You can see my arm. That they sent a clock in. This is a clock they sent and thank goodness there's no damage this only has plastic wrap and there's that thin foam inside anyway let me get this unwrapped and let's see what we're gonna work on next so this is a clock that I ordered and like I said it doesn't have any damages I can see of and the only reason I ordered it is I like the idea of the two little shells I will admit there's not much you can put on here because they're only about three inches deep. But on some of the stuff you just don't know. And also the brand of this, most people don't buy because they normally have uh, not the highest quality movement in it. It's a cent Centurion. I don't even know if it's wound up or not. It was ticking. Let me give it a little wine. Yeah, it's wound down. It's trying to chime. It's making a ticking sound, kind of, as it's chiming. There could be something stuck up above. Could be this thing hasn't ran for a while. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and take this clock apart and oil it, clean it and oil it, and see what quality this one is. I do believe this is a newer clock because it has that splatter black on here which was, what was it, in the 60s, 70s? They thought that was cool looking, I guess. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and clean that out. I'll clean up the case and get it waxed up. So the first thing we need to do is get the hands off, get the dial off. This here uh, wood part here I'll probably take it off instead of the dial itself. That way the whole plate comes out so I can get to all the screws on the movement. And we'll go from there. So let me get that off first. So take, taking the nut off to the minute hand, then the minute hand comes off. This actually has a nut that tightens the hour hand on also, which is odd. And it just pops right off. So now I get those four screws out. So I went ahead and wound up the time side all the way, and I'm going to do the same with the gong side, the striking side, because if I do decide to take this movement apart, I'm going to wind them all the way up and then I'm going to put a, a healthy zip tie on there to hold the spring, release it down to the zip tie, and that way I can safely take this thing apart. Now looking as clean as this is, I have a feeling this clock wasn't used very much. It's, let's say not that old. And after I take it out, I'm going to find out whether I just want to oil this clock and see how well it runs or what I want to do. Uh, every five or so years, being that this is a nice closed case, you could probably run it seven years and you should take, take it apart anyway and oil the front and the back, not just the front, because you're defeating the purpose. The idea is to stop the wear, 
stop the oil from turning into a gummy varnish or whatever and so that's why you would normally take your clock apart especially a winder clock and so far after I've wound it all the way sounds like it's ticking really nice so I have a feeling that's all I'm gonna do is oil this clock and by the way so far the only thing I found cheap on this clock is this key moves back and forth on its rod it's not a deal break but I'm just saying that's I can see one sign of cheapness so anyway I'm gonna go ahead disconnect the pendulum obviously and I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this movement so we can take it out and take a better look at it so the lever that makes the alarm or the gong not uh, go I went ahead and disconnected the uh, plate that went across to hold it in place so that way this will come straight out it says made in Korea and that's all I see there and that's on the front plate normally your back plate is where anything is this has a little bit of oil on here I see thumbprints or fingerprints that's about all I see I don't doubt I mean it, it could have been rebuilt once is why I see all the prints on here but uh other than that it actually doesn't look too bad and for what this clock is I'm not concerned about rebuilding it if it's still working so there's a good possibility someone did take this out and I don't know if they cleaned it but at least they oiled it up as it does have excess oil everywhere so anyway I'm gonna oil this thing up and put it back in the case and see how it runs and the reason why I'm gonna oil it is like I, I've said before on some of my other videos according to the clock book which this is mainly talked about cuckoo clocks because they're open but according to the book it says every three to five years you should take out your movement and oil all these pivots and if your clock stops and can't get it running again because you didn't oil it that's the time you should take your movement apart so this one was still ticking after I wound it up and so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just re-oil everything on the front of this clock and on the back so it's done properly also each one of these holes I've noticed the from Cree and whatnot they really secure the movement down I'm not sure why because in America they only put one screw per corner so that's a kind of another sign that you can tell that this is a foreign mo movement even though it says made in Korea so there's a ticking sound when this thing's striking and I found that the ends right here on both sides are hitting this gear here and so just to fix that I'm just gonna give them a slight bend so they don't touch but before I do let's see if you can hear the same thing I do So let me get that bent and we'll see if we've solved that problem. So I'm not sure that it solved the problem because this gear here really has a lot of, as they call it, end play. 
and the further it moves over it's actually this next one in this one right here you notice how far away from this gear it gets anyway the further this gear moves over to the edge the noisier it gets and there's not really anything I can do with this if anything if it is really bugging me there's a chance I might be able to push that bushing in further but that wouldn't be the right salt solution because it's already flush on this side So I guess if it bugs bugs you, get a new movement because that's usually what a clock shop will tell you when they're working on one of these clocks is that these things are really cheap to just, they're not worth working on, throw them away and buy a, a new movement to stick in here. I'm not going to do that. The clock still runs, it doesn't have wore out parts. So unless I really had to replace a lot of stuff in here which normally that's not the case I'm not going to change it so anyway I think what I'm going to do I got this oiled I need to oil the springs to make sure they're still good and then I'm going to wax the inside of the box and put the movement back in it doesn't hurt to spend a little time with your clock too to get f familiar with it, get it good and waxed, and maybe this will give you the incentive to give your clock a little more love than what it's been getting, just being wound up, and that's all it's been getting. So take the pendulum off, lay it on its back, and wax it to where it's got all, everything covered with the wax. Now this here clamp that I have on here, I noticed that the piece of board in here that holds the face on, the dial, it was broke so I popped some glue into the cracks and I've got it glued together and so that's just, it is no biggie but it helps the clock out a lot. I don't know if this is showing up on camera. But this came from a uh, Calls Jewelry. They paid $119.95. And I will admit it's kind of tacky to leave your price tag on there. Yet now that this is a vintage clock, you can tell someone paid good money for it back in the day when this thing was made. And coming from a jewelry store, it's too bad that people didn't understand or didn't know at the time the quality of the movement that was in this clock. Now just because it says it's made in Korea and you know it's not the best quality clock but you like the looks of it which I consider this art and an idea for the clock that's why I bought it. Now this clock can be hung on the wall and that's originally what it was meant for but this could be considered a mantle clock also or you can set it on the table but it is a large clock. And so as far as I'm concerned I like the looks of it. If I decided to, if that movement ever crapped out on me will say I would possibly buy a new movement if I like the looks of what I see right now and if it comes in useful such as these little shelves that are on each side to show off one of your tchotchkes because I'm deep waxing this clock I'm gonna go ahead and take the dial off so I can wax this board all the way to kind of make the whole clock match. When you're waxing don't worry about getting the wax on the glass 
because you can spray your rag or paper towel and then wipe the glass off instead of getting the glass cleaner all over the fresh wax that you have on here. I got the movement screwed back in. I got the gong system screwed back in including the on and off bar there. So let's stand it up and see if it ticks. So it does tick but I want to go ahead this does look nice still. But I want to go ahead and give it a little bit of wax just to help protect it. So it seems to be ticking even better yet since I have oiled it. Which I kind of figure so because it did want to run after I wound it up. So now we can go ahead and screw this on, but realistically I'm going to wait a day because I have this glued here and it is holding, but I need to let that glue dry so the wood will be strong when I put the screws back in. So just to show you that I'm not just saying this is a cheap movement. Like I say, other uh, clocksmiths that work on these clocks will tell you the same thing. And watch this gear inside here and tell me what you see. Can you see it vibrating up and down? So, it, so what that's telling me it's not perfectly centered on the shaft that goes all the way through. <laughs> Must be getting ready to gong itself. Now to put the face on. So we got this Centurion, I do believe it's pronounced, I could be wrong, clock done. And this goes to show if you like the looks of the clock, buy it. It doesn't matter if it has a bad movement in it. Maybe it still works and you'll get some enjoyment out of it yourself. Otherwise, put a new movement in it. Anyway, like I say, nobody wanted it. This is a good brand to get if you happen to like the clock that they are selling because no one will pay the money that they normally ask for. Anyway, until next time, don't forget to subscribe because it's free and you be out on a search for a clock that you happen to like. Anyway, God bless. Give me a thumbs up.